Welcome to Wine Decoded. It's been a big day tasting. Already 300 wines down the hatch, and we've got another four here today with the lovely people from Bondar. Andre, thank you for coming. Pleasure. Selena, thank you for coming too. Now, uh, quirky things. Andre and I just realised that we both did a vintage at Tintara together, which was plenty of fun, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> it was busy. Yeah. So, uh, we're going to have a look at a bit of their booze, but really, I think at the, at, at the outset, it'd be great to have a bit of a chat with you guys about your... I guess what you're trying to achieve and the regions your fruit comes from. And um, to that end, um, I'll probably just throw it over to whoever wants to... Selena? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can start. Don't be shy. Sure. I can start. So, um, Andre and I have a vineyard in the Far mm. We've got the Rona Vineyard, which yep. um, we feel very lucky to have. We took it over in 2013 yep. um, after harvest. So, basically what we were looking for uh, when we bought the vineyard was a place where we could make McLaren Vale wines that showed some restraint, that showed some elegance for the region. Yep. Um, you know, we really like wines that have subtlety to them, that have nuance, yep. and um, I guess we, we seek out those kind of delicate yep. elements of, you know, the wines that we drink. So we were looking for somewhere that we could make those kind of wines from McLaren Vale. Yep. Um, so our site is right at the bottom of the Blewett Springs region in McLaren Bar. Uh -huh. um, it's a little bit higher, it's probably about 200 metres above yep. sea level and it's predominantly sandy soils. So yep. Um, yep. that gives you that kind of lightness, that fragrance, that um, nice sort of savoury finish to the wine, which we think is really yep. important. Yeah, yeah great. So. So yeah. is that is that sort of kind of in alignment with your your thoughts? Yeah. You could get in trouble here. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, definitely. I think Selena's hit the nail on the head. I think we look for you know she's exactly right. We look for fragrance. We look for savoury quality, um, not necessarily for volume or for finesse and, and nuance. I think is a good word. Yeah. Um, to, to us, that's fine wine. Yeah. Um, and then we also we we own that land, but we we also look to the Adelaide Hills. Um, yeah. You know, which is our close neighbour. Um, for even more um, tightness and brightness, and yep. at the moment, just with our Chardonnay, which we're not looking at today, but you know, we, we certainly we're interested in that region too. Yeah, yeah. So what's what's coming out of the Adelaide Hills, and what's coming out of McLaren Vale? At the moment, everything we do is uh, McLaren Vale, except for our Adelaide Hills Chardonnay. Yeah. Um, but I've been, you know, up that way a bit. I've, I've spent quite a bit of my career up there, but um, you know. Newer things that I look at from that region, more like gamays and um, you know interesting alternative yeah. stuff. Yeah, sure. Yeah, because we've got Shiraz in spades. Yeah. Um, at our vineyard, um, you know we've got Grenache, uh, and at our vineyard we're planting um, more appropriate varieties for for our region. So we're planting yeah. Southern Rhone stuff basically. So yeah, cool. Um, you know, Carignan, Cinso. Kumars uh, and a bit of Tariga. Yeah, nice. Yeah. I, I like Tariga. Structure, perfume, all combined in one. It's sort of a yeah. pretty yummy variety. And the others, again, all different characters that uh, flow through to layer up a wine quite nicely if you're blending yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So it's interesting to, it's that you, you talk about McLaren Vale and you talk about restraint and, and we were talking earlier about the changes in the in the industry and, and for our viewers, if you go back and you think about uh, what's happened and you taste McLaren Vale wine and Barossa wine from 20 years ago, Big, bold wines, plenty of oak in there. And we've seen a shift over time, which has been lovely, to wines that are perhaps fresher and brighter, still have amazing density of fruit, and uh, focus on texture and focus on harmony and, and, uh, and just lovely drinkable wine as opposed yeah. to wines that you drink a glass and go, oh my God, can't cope with yeah. another one. Yeah. So with that, I am quite looking forward to tasting some of your booze. Um, cool. What should we try first? Um, so we've actually, just for the first time in 2017, made a Fiano. Um, yeah. It's a very small production wine. We made yeah. about 70 dozen. Actually, we just hand bottled it on the weekend. There we go. Um, now Thank this, you. This Fiano is actually not from our vineyard. We yeah. have a guy who helps us with our site, helps yeah. us manage the vineyard, and he's got his own family vineyard. Yeah, okay. And uh, this year in 17. Oh, he basically supplies like the majority of McLaren Vale small yep. producers with Fiano. Yep. Um, but He's this your year, Fiano dealer. Yeah, he is right. like and everyone in McLaren Vale's dealer. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, in seventeen he had a bit extra, um, but he kind of yeah. rang us and said, "Do you want to have a play?" And so yeah. we did. Seven, seventeen being later, cooler. Um, you know, I love Chardonnay and I love fine white. And yeah. 
for me, I was like, well, if I'm going to give it a go, this is the year because 17 yeah. was just ideal conditions. Like the reds in 17 almost look hills like. From yeah, the yeah. So I had a look at the fruit and, um, you know, did some of the numbers and the acidity is through the roof. Uh, they're, they're ripe and beautiful and crunchy. So, yeah, we yeah. gave it a go. So. Yeah, so and again, guys, um, when he says acidity is through the roof, it's not a bad thing. It's, it can, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's typically a very good thing. <laughs> What it means is you've got natural acidity, which tends to have uh, a finer texture than uh, when you add acid, unless you play some of the tricky things that winemakers do. Uh, but um, yeah, it can really help uh, make a, a beautiful fine wine. Um, so um, before I go into tasting this, um, tell us about the making and, 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 and what you thought, yeah, bloody hard with your first go, to say, yeah. what are you going to do? It's, it's almost finger in the wind stuff. But... Yeah, it is a bit. I, I think I, the first thing I did was chew, have a chew and uh, yeah. taste and... The skins are fascinating. They're quite peppery, um, yeah. quite thick. Yeah. Um, so I thought this could benefit from some skin contact. I mm-hmm. thought um, I want to make it savoury. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the ones I've tried have been quite fruity, so I was looking to temper that a little bit. Yep. So what I did is we didn't have much. So yep. the first lot of pressing, like the free run juice effectively, went to a ceramic egg, which we used for the yep. Yeah. Yeah. Later. It's a little one. Uh, it's, it's like 600. Yeah, it's a big one. <laughs> it's a big one. Yeah, a big one. And then the leftover stuff, the stuff that got gently pressed, not, not too hard. Yeah. Uh, I kept, I held the skins back for, so. Yeah, uh, yeah. About 10% of this wine is fermented for the whole time on the skins. Yeah. Um, the rest of it fermented uh, on effectively full solids, although yeah. um, it was racked into the egg, so we lost some solids there. Yeah. But trying to build texture, trying to build intrigue, yeah. at the same time, this is kind of my take on yeah. Um, almost essentially what's a natural wine because all of those things happen naturally. Fermentation, it went through Malo. Mm-hmm. Um, it was settled just with bentonite um, yeah. and then bottled unfiltered. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, for a first tab, yeah. you've you got to be pretty happy because there's a lot going on in that wine. Yeah, I, uh, yeah I'd be chuffed. Um, Tasting that wine, there is a there's a there's a lovely perfume. There's a lovely spice about it. Mm. It's certainly got some complexity, but it's all really well integrated, quite harmonious, textually lovely. Um, yeah. You do get some some of that phenolics, but it's uh, so phenolics are chemicals in grapes that make things feel good and bad in your mouth. In this case, they feel good, um, and there's almost a sort of like a silvery line of bitterness, but but a good again a good thing. It's mm. like like you see in many of those Italian. Italian wines, yeah. Yeah. where it helps just clean the, the finish of the palate. Yeah. That's um, yeah. great core fruit. Yeah. As it is. It's good. It's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. lovely. It's fresh, crisp. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not at that mega crazy zingy German Riesling level. It, yeah. it just bang on for that wine. I, yeah. Man, you should be uh, well shafted. No, we're, we're stoked. And yeah. the, the yeah. trade uh, have shone to it. They loved it. We hardly made any, but they, yeah. they, they love it. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think we'll keep making. We'll keep making. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what do you what do you have to do to get your dealer to keep delivering more? Oh, pretty <laughs> funny. When we first released it um, uh, and got the reaction we got, I, I rung him straight away and said, "Can we get more, Ben?" And he's like, "Of course." So, yeah. So no, we'll get we'll get more next year. But we'll only, I think we'll only ever do a small amount. Yeah. Yeah. I think Chardonnay still for me is the king. Yeah, yeah. Well, Chardonnay is a beautiful thing when yeah. it's when it's done well and yeah. it's and it's uh, just bang on. It's delicious, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for sharing that with me. That is, I think, one of the um, best McLaren Vail whites I've had in uh, in a while. So I'm uh, yeah, yeah, pretty pretty impressed with that one. Um, I kind of want to drink it rather than tip it, but we need to move on. So um, let's have a look at your rosé. And um, move that one over. So rosé uh, for you guys. What's what makes good rosé? What are you making this one from? Uh, I'm sorry. It's Grenache mostly. Yeah. Um, there is one percent Coonwas. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we're laughing about one percent Coonwas. Now the fact that it's used one percent is is kind of funny. But do you know what? One percent can make a difference. When um, when I was making sparkling, we used to do a um, a little dosage and we'd mix it up the, the liqueur d'expedition. Um, we would add literally per bottle. Uh, a drop of a certain ingredient and a couple of drops of another <laughs> certain ingredient. These are trade secrets. It's like Kentucky Fried Chicken. And they would make an incredible difference. Um, so it'd be, it'd be interesting. Can I discern the Kuna well, character? Well, you know. <laughs> no, I doubt it very much. So, no, Grenache, Grenache is truly the driver. Yes. I mean, we've got, we've got new Kuna in the ground. So, um, so it's going to be 2% Kuna next year? Yeah. yeah probably, probably. Awesome. <laughs> no, 
Yeah, but we've also got some new Grenache, so that'll yeah. that'll keep the numbers nice and high on the yeah, Grenache side. Yeah. 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 Okay. But really, um, you know, Grenache Gren- is the driver, um, and in a not dissimilar way to the Fiano, um, we're looking at very raw material here. There's, mm-hmm. Again, in 17, there's no need to add acid here, mm-hmm. even though the wine's been put through Malo. Good balance for that. Yeah. yeah. So, um, basically three batches. The first two batches, I was more cautious with stainless, a bit of solids in the juice, um, yeah. but really it's about freshness and, and yeah. acid line. The last batch, um, I thought I need to add some, some breadth to this one, to the palate. Yeah. So it was 100% solids fermented in oak, yeah. and it's really given it some phenolic, but yeah. not dissimilar to the Fiano, when you're not using sugar, you need something to give it some breadth and to, yeah. to balance that acidity. Um, yeah. And in both these cases, I think that 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 um, you know that extra work, that wine making work, is giving yeah. it that that breadth. So and laid in some lovely flavour as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, we're really happy with that. Not losing your flavour because we're not filtering or yeah. 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 yeah, good one. So, look, very interesting trying that because the natural acidity um, for McLaren Vale kind of surprises me. Um, it's telling you something that you've got a pretty decent site and you're looking after the vineyard because if you didn't, <laughs> you wouldn't have that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, are, are you, you know, it's 12.5% alcohol. Um, that balance between flavour, alcohol, acidity, you seem to be finding a nice little place for that. And yeah. is that part of that sort of elegance and restraint thing for you guys? Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. We're finding that Grenache is a bit, um, we're kind of testing how far we can go picking a bit earlier, yep. you know, and it, it tends to be a bit more forgiving for us than picking yep. early. Sounds something like Shiraz where it yep. can be a bit green if it's yeah, a bit too sure. early. Grenache tends to just be, like, have a really nice kind of um, herbal kind of side to yep. it when it's picked yep. early. So, yeah, in that in that sense, um, I think that... we're learning every year about our vineyard, essentially. Do you know what? I love that. Because what you're doing is you're getting out there and you're going, hey, yo, let's, let's push the boundaries. Let's yeah. see what this region can do. Let's see what our vineyard can do. Um, we're prepared to go so far that... It goes kind of pear shape. <laughs> well, sometimes, <laughs> yeah. To make sure yeah. that we're making the best possible wine yeah. in the long run. Yeah. You know, and that's a, that's a beautiful thing. And I think, look, this is a lovely wine. Some of the things Andre was talking about before was not using sugar in the wine. Um, sugar often in wine is used to mask a lack of fruit quality, fruit length, or length of fruit flavour and depth of fruit flavour. In this case, they haven't needed to. The wine looks good in, in that sense, great length, great depth. Um, there are obviously sweet styles of wine that are rewarded by having sugar and think of the great German reasons. Oh, think yeah. of the yeah. beautiful Rutherglen muskets yeah. um, and the, and the wines from Spain and, yeah. and, and so on. Uh, the wines from the Loire Valley made from Chenin Blanc. Um, in this case, uh, with dry rosés, for me, they're kind of the way to go. Uh, I haven't had really a sweet rosé that I've enjoyed uh, or loved. Um, maybe a couple of grams of sugar in a, in a, uh, a champagne rosé. Um, but lovely wine, and the components Andre was talking about of the different winemaking elements, what he's doing, he's trying to introduce, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, different characteristics and different elements to the wine to make it more complete. And it's not really being very interventionist or um, very technical, it's just saying, you know what, if we do a little bit this way, um, relatively simply, and if we do a little bit this way with a bit of skins or a bit of solids, we'll get better uh, a better, more complete wine that's more complex, more intriguing, yep. yeah. layered with flavour and texture. Yeah, I think, I mean, the ultimate aim is, is balance. Um, and, you know, we, we try and achieve that through um, blending. And, and yeah. to, to have the, the tools to put it all together, you know, you do need to do, yeah. like you said, like some things a little bit further this way, some things a little bit further that way, and at the yeah. end you put it together and get something complete. Yeah, well... Lovely, and with warmer weather coming, that's going to be ever so smashable. Yeah, I, reckon, uh, I, think that's, I think that's right. Like, as much as we talk about the complexity and all yeah, the different yeah. things we're doing, at the end of the day, these wines, we just want people to drink and enjoy yeah. and be delicious, you know? So, yeah. if you're not thinking about your glass of rosé, that's fine. <laughs> you isn't know, you just that, drinking it. Isn't that the perfect attitude to have? Just drink it and enjoy it. If yeah. you want to get sort of but cerebral yeah, about it, you yeah, can. Tanky, but if you don't, cool, yeah. that's... <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. going to be a happy place to go. Yeah. Let's put that up there because I didn't before. Um, lovely wine. Thanks, guys. You're two for two so far. The strike rate is, uh, is, is pretty good. Um, Liv told me you're going to be okay. <laughs> so, you know, and I trust her. So, so what are we looking at next? All right, so this is our Rennes Vineyard Grenache. Um, mm. I need to get a hold of this. Yeah. Oh, my God, because I've tasted 
a massive amount of Grenache today, and oh, so it's yeah. going to be really good to see. <laughs> oh, awesome. So, yeah, named for our vineyard, um, we have one small block of Grenache that was planted, oh, it's about 45 years old, yep. and it's planted in sand, yep. um, which works really well in the Vale, like Grenache and sand just seem to yep. be a good, really good combination. Yep. So, um, yeah, we kind of, again, like learning about our site, but yep. I think we learnt pretty quickly about this block, you know, in the first couple of years, we kind of figured out the different sections that ripened differently so we actually pick one small block we pick mm. three times so first yep. for rosé we pick the most vigorous kind of sections yep and then we pick for our gsm blend which mm -hmm. we don't have here today yep. um and then the final pick is this uh straight grenache so yeah this gets the kind of lowest yielding vines the most yeah. concentrated fruit you know certainly has a yeah exactly yep. um yep. so yeah this is our i suppose most serious mm. expression of grenache so. it's still pretty fun I mean, that's a, again, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, you're right. And I, I think it's also one thing we've learned is, you know, the vineyard throws us beautiful raspberry pure and pure, fruit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. purity. And I'm not going to mess with Aromatics. that. You know, even, I don't even really use a lot of old oak in this wine. It's mostly in stainless. Mm -hmm. um, because I found in older oak, it would mirror the older oak and it would, you'd see this sort of stale yep, oak yep, character. Yep. And I was like, I don't want that to... Yeah. Getting away this beauty, it's beautiful. Well, and that's interesting because uh, Dominic um, Huber from uh, Terra Limit, um, yeah. his Ganache is now going into concrete. Yeah. So he was going into initially smaller oak, then he got bigger and bigger and bigger oak, and all of a sudden he's like, mm, you know what? Concrete. Yeah. Um, so he's trying that out. Yeah. And um, I think it just goes to show that you can make really complete wines without necessarily having them in oak. There's lots yeah. of different choices. Yeah. And uh, you've well, got to yeah. do what works. The next version is actually in ceramic. So, yeah. um, yeah. so it's poor. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Did you have one or to have like a dozen? We had one, one. We and had now one. we've got three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They multiply. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> She's like, that sure must be exhausted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, like Selena said, really yeah. low yielding, 16 particularly. It was, yeah. Strangely yeah. enough, we picked on the same day this year, mm. in 16, mm. we picked the Rose Age on Toe and this mm. uh, batch. Yeah. Um, now, it was picked before anything on the vineyard, which yeah. is unusual because Grenache is known as a late variety. Yeah. Um, but that goes to show you how hard I pushed it. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking bunches. Were like, they look like little Pinot bunches. They yeah, like yeah, yeah. This big, tiny <laughs> little berries. Um, and you can see that in this wine. It has, like, depth of flavour. has some nice tannin, which, you know, sometimes with Grenache, you don't get a heap of tannin. So, yeah. Um, but to build that structure, I also leave it on skins for a long time. So it yeah, was about yeah. seven weeks on skins. Seven weeks, yeah. yeah. It's interesting because I, yeah, yeah, this is where now I sound smart because I've heard <laughs> you say it already, but it does have that perfume of maceration, sure. uh, yeah. um, which yeah. is lovely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. So um, interesting in, 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 the, in the picking windows, you must have been out there just tasting it all the time. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, I think yeah, this almost this drives everything because yeah. this is the important wine for us and what we yeah. do. And, yeah. Um, so this is the one I'm looking at most, you yep. know, and, and then everything else was catching up on yep, yep. and I was like, let's just do it all at once this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but we, you know, we do a lot to pull this vineyard back to, to, to get that concentration. Yeah, so, okay. So what have you done in the vineyard? What are, what are the sort of things that have, have happened to, or what did you need to do when you looked at it and said, oh my God, we've got triffids? <laughs> or was it, was it like that? Or was it sort of... It is in, it is in some patches, yeah, you know, yeah. but, um, but here it's, it's about letting letting the grasses grow really you yeah know, like a lot of competition yeah, yeah a lot of good things, healthy yeah. competition in, in the block um yeah. and you know that's that's a movement towards organic viticulture really. yeah yeah but, um so you just got to get the right grasses yeah yes. sure but um uh, yeah, you could get busted for that it's not, not <laughs> yeah, <time>. yeah that's <laughs> true <laughs> <laughs> be careful <laughs> um but but i mean in, in all seriousness when you're talking about grasses my mind immediately and, and you talk about organics and it, it is a bit of a buzzword uh, mm -hmm. and biodynamic is a bit of a buzzword but when you go around and you see different vineyards and you see ones that are looked after well so many of them are at minimum a sort of a hybrid of some sort of organic yeah. approach maybe a little bit of biodynamics um and a lot of it seems to really be about making sure your dirt is in good nick and yeah. uh, able to hold moisture, for example, must yeah. be hard with the yeah. sandy soil, you know, to hold moisture and, yeah. you know, build organic matter in it and things like that. Is, is that sort of the, the focus with the grasses and, and yep. the organic kind no, of thing? No, 100%. Yep. Yeah. Yep, definitely. Um, uh, the, the thing to think about this green ash too is, um, you know, it's, it's got good vine age. They're mm. um, 40, about 45 years yeah. old. So yeah. um, 
It shows in the tannin. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. It's just great texture. Yeah. So out of all the blocks off of Rainier Vineyard, the, the vineyard we bought at Selena Explained, um, this was the one that was the easiest for me to walk in and say, wow, like I don't have yeah. to do too much. I just have to work out where the different components are going to go. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I tell you what, when I look at that wine, I see a hell of a lot going on. It has a beautiful depth and length of fruit. It, it still does have restraint. Yeah. I love the tannin in it. And we've talked about this in Wine Dakota before about vine age and its impact on the quality of tannin and the depth of flavour. And we're seeing that particularly in Australia with Pinot now starting to hit to the 20, 25 years old and, and a, a new step. But Grenache, 45 years old, um, lovely flavours, beautiful spice, beautiful perfume. Um, hey, three for three. <laughs> <laughs> Looking good. <laughs> what are we doing? Let's put that up there as well. Um, Delicious wine. I would happily, I think, hook half a bottle of that and not have noticed and be ready for the other half. It kind of is one of those wines. Which like, is, where did that bottle go away? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and it'd be interesting to see what, what do you think happens with this wine or will happen with this wine now as it ages? It's, it's an interesting question because we made this wine for the first time in 2015. Yeah. So we've had History one. That, yeah, <laughs> we've had one example of that it. That one's still so looking far, good. <laughs> it is, but it, it kind of right. goes through yeah, phases. Yeah. Like we found, you know, for the first six to 12 months after the release it looked beautiful yeah. and then it kind of went a bit like dull and dark yeah and, yeah but now it's coming back out again so yeah. ugh, time will tell, hard to tell. it yeah. is very hard to tell yeah i think um certainly they've got five years in them oh know, easy yeah. easy yeah walk in the park for that but yeah it'd be just interesting to see you know for you guys how these wines um develop and, and what changes in them as, yeah. as they mature exactly yeah. um, again for you know for you guys this is a great example of why you need to buy more than one bottle. <laughs> so that's a bit biased, but if you, you know, if you do have multiple bottles of wine, you can see how they evolve. When some wines do go into a flat spot, I think Condria is a classic example of that. Sure. Yeah, so the first few years it looks amazing, goes into a hole for like five years, yeah. and then starts to come back out of it again and it looks brilliant. So you either drink it in the first couple or you wait ten. Yeah. And it's a and, and you only know that by experience and it, it's not about a variety, it's about an individual yeah. wine. Oh, so so yeah. 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 We we um you know, we travel a lot and um visit a lot of wineries overseas and we, we yeah. love that European mentality of, of understanding how things yeah. evolve but also how um you can taste the wine and then reflect on the vintage, you know. Mm. Yeah. And we love mm. that. It tells we, the story want, of the year. You know, we want that sight yeah. driven story i think that's yeah. really important to us in all that yeah it keeps it interesting doesn't it yeah and and i think if you if you if you're fighting against that you're probably not being honest with the fruit that you're having any given year yeah yeah, yeah. you're sort of trying to then you will be intervening a lot and we'll be playing all the tricks to, to make things happen yeah. look guys that is a lovely wine i think um, beautiful restraint beautiful spice you can see the fact that it just doesn't need that oak at all no. and the fruit and this and the tannin from the fruit in, it, in it, on its own is is enough to make that uh, just a delicious beautifully textured wine Thank you for sharing it. That's Thank lovely. You. Let's have a look at. I'm going to just drink it. <laughs> How does it compare to the other Grenache you've tasted today? Do you know what? They're all good but all different. Yeah. Um, so it's a variety that could be made in a really different Yeah, way. most of the Grenache I had today was from the Barossa. Um, yeah, okay. So They're different. Different. Yeah. But um, all beautiful wines. And, yeah. and uh, equally, as this is a beautiful wine, and, and I. It's just it's just lovely to see something from McLaren Fell that, that does have that, that delicacy. Because, you know, when I was there in, in uh, the early thousands, people that were trying to do that would be outcasts. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so it's, it's great that you guys have the yeah. opportunity to share the lovely fruit from this vineyard now with us. So yeah. um, lucky last, let's let's do a swap. Oh, yeah. so, uh, that's, uh, that's there. What are we drinking? So this is our Violet Our Shiraz. Um, this is yep. from 2016. So again, this just went into bottle a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, and this is mostly from the sandy blocks on our, our property. Mm -hmm. um, plant, uh, the vines go up to about 70 years old yep. in the Shiraz. Yep. How are they, um, they going? So are they yielding well still? I mean, for a 70 year old? <laughs> no, not really. I mean, when you we guys, bought it, the you guys are pretty low. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're actually, they're, they're, they're balancing like, out they're now. They're patchy. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, when we talked before about the work we've done, it's mostly in Shiraz because yeah, yeah. Um, Utipa's rife. Uh, um, it's a tough disease. Yeah, it? so it's about evening it out. And, yeah. and um, uh, you know, I think we're starting to see the outcomes and, yeah. and the outcomes for me are that beautiful, even ripeness, you know, like um, that's yeah. the best tool for a winemaker because you, if you can pick and confidently 
no, people, everything's the same, the same level of brightness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're not going to get surprised. And then there's that counterpoint that if there's something a little bit under and something a little bit over, maybe it adds a bit of complexity, <laughs> so it all just does head in the whole time. <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah. Much. So it's, um, yeah. But for, for you guys out there, Andre mentioned Utipa. Utipa is a disease that infects the old timber, old wood in the vine, and it starts actually from the top and works its way down. So quite often the solution is to cut them off at the base and let a shoot come back up again and retrain that. So you, re you retain your root system, and uh, the vine establishes faster again, and it and it's got all of those characteristics of old vine fruit once it re-establishes. Um, but also with I guess with a, a vineyard that's perhaps a little uneven, that organic work of of yep. um, Launch. enriching Launch. the, yes. the soil yeah. is going to help you perhaps bring back some vitality into those yeah. vines. Yeah. You, have you seen that? Uh, One hundred percent. Yeah, we mulch yeah. like very specific sites. Yeah, you know we um, we get you know. You can get people to take a photograph from on top, yeah, and you can mulch to within a meter, you know, yeah, and you yeah, can yeah, see yeah. where there might be patches of utipa, yeah. Um, so mulch is very important, and then mm. um, on the very, very deep sand, this is, yeah, uh, we actually plant um, cover crops, which, yeah, um, uh, barley grasses, legume, yeah. um, to add yeah. uh, nutrients back to the soil, yeah. But we tend to roll them rather than cut them, um, yeah. because it also protects. Um, in, the, in the hot sun, mm. yep. you know, those Bouncing hot sun days, it just takes the temperature. Out. It's interesting because it's um, there's a heap of benefits to doing things those ways. Um, when I think of, I think when you my perspective, when you add uh, an artificial fertilizer, it's like giving a, a grapevine cocaine. <laughs> it's like yay, and then they're like oh, we need it again. <laughs> yeah, give me more. But if you introduce those nutrients very slowly and yeah. gradually, and and, yeah. and and do it by growing a crop. Yep. Um, and letting that slowly compost down, yep. Yep. and you get a much more even thing. So yeah, you know, it's like a diabetic and a glycemic index. You're making a vine happy. Yeah, uh, it's um yeah, it's a great approach to have. Um, this grass uh, looking very tasty. Thank you. <laughs> I uh, you're four for four so far. I look again, really in, really in, enjoying that. Oh, okay, I'll go first this time. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely balance in the wine. There is no real overt oak characters in this wine. Uh, it's got lovely, lovely mouthfeel. The length and depth on it is is brilliant. Um, McLaren Vale can almost, at points, be so inky and so concentrated that it's over the top. This has a really lovely balance between um, getting to an, an extreme level and being underripe. It, it's it's not overripe at all. I don't even know why I use that word. It's just it seems to be for me bang on. I love the. I love the flavours and the richness of it, and there is complexity in there again. Um, there is spice, there is yeah. layering, and and a, and a great harmony to this wine. Uh, yeah, well, we we love it. Um, you know, I think as I mentioned, I think we've been slowly getting getting uh, used to our Shiraz. You know, like there's yeah. there's seven th th like little different blocks on the yeah. property, and um, that we use in this wine, and I think that it's taken some time to even them out with viticulture work but also to work out how to best treat them in the winery so mm -hmm. different ones I use some whole bunch work mm -hmm. um, and that's giving us some some lift and fragrance some yep. complexity yep. some spice and tannin um, does it pull back the, the sort of the intensity of the fruit a bit and tame it a bit oh, definitely. as well no it definitely yeah. does um, it lowers alcohol yeah you know, that's that's another really good tool for us because you know we're mm -hmm. a warm region and Shiraz in warm regions can, can throw high, higher alcohol so yeah yeah um, and then other batches, I do some extended maceration. Yep. Again, to add some savouriness. Yep. Um, uh, and you can see I'm building tools here to, yeah, yeah, to yeah. come together to a final. Um, yep. But there's some DNA of McLaren Vale and of our vineyard here that's unmistakable. And I think yep. it's, it's lovely. And it's not something I've, I'm trying to get away from at all. I'm just trying to, to use some technique and, and um, to, to rein it in, I think. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. there's, there's yeah. that beautiful, like, you know, uh, chocolate and, and cherry yeah. and all yeah, those yeah. flavours there, unmistakably in the Panama Shrimp. Yeah, 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 sure. Um, but I think, you know, the tannins are there, they're late, they're beautiful, but they're not strong. Um, yeah. And then the one thing I like about this wine is it's not so much held together by tannin, it's held together by nice acidity. Um, again, 16 for us was a really elongated harvest. Yep. Um, so we managed to hold on to some natural tightness. I yeah, think, yeah. And, and you see that in this wine is a a freshness that looks beautiful it's like vibrant yeah okay. it's great so, yeah. great color um, um yeah definitely very bright even on a brown table you can see that it's got great <laughs> color um interesting because you know 16 went by for us in about three and a half hours it was yeah weird. <laughs> see i think the difference was yeah in essa well in mclaren vale at least i could speak to and then adelaide hills of course but we had rain at the end of january yeah 
and it was a lot of rain. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. it was cool from there on in. So yeah, it actually, yeah, okay. we were looking like harvesting yeah. the earliest ever. Yeah, we ended up harvesting six or seven weeks later than that. So, yeah, wow. Yeah, that's just, massive, isn't it? Isn't it agriculture fun? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the holiday got in. Yeah. All of a sudden, it's like cancel the flights. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, nuts. It's funny when winemakers are just waiting for vintage. Like, that's what yeah. they always do with themselves. Yeah, 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 yeah. Having this year too. When is it? Oh, the sunny? Where's the sunny? Where I've the cleaned the press. Yeah. I've cleaned the egg. Yeah. All three of them. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Should we just pick something? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, well, look, this has been awesome seeing these wines. I really want to see the other wines. Um, so I look forward to next time there's a, another release and you guys coming around. But it would intrigue me to sort of um, find out a little bit about where you're going now. What's, what's next? And, you know, what are you really working on? Um, what are the things that are... That's sort of driving it. it doesn't really matter whether it's about wine making or marketing or you know what, what sort of um, what's what's the thing? Cash in the bank, obviously. <laughs> you know, you wine make you broke are, now. Right? No, yeah. 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 We are like we're one hundred percent on uh, Bondi wines as of August thirty first. Yeah, both of us, which is fantastic. So Andre's quitting his day job. Yeah, which is yeah. Nice. Um, building a little winery. Yeah, yeah. Um, awesome. Because yeah. I'm a control awesome. freak, but also um, <laughs> to me, you know, to control quality is, is yes. it's our you know our main driver is, is to produce something of high quality even at a, a, a low range so yeah you know I would I want to have that control but I want something really simple it's going to be just very it's a shed basically yeah um, so that'll be fun right. and then um, what else We've got some new plantings coming in, so... Oh, uh, did we yeah. really talk about that? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. The, the, the different... <laughs> yeah. The different yeah. But that's going to be great, because you've yeah. got different rowing varieties. Yeah. Uh, where, yeah. where have you got your, your material from to, to plant those? Have you sort of gone out and selected from somewhere else, or you got stuff from nurseries? Yeah, and, nurseries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I, I'm pretty careful with the... Um, with the graft... Well, I want to graft onto uh, rootstock. Yeah. For a number of reasons. Like, salt's a real problem yeah. in our area. Yeah. Um, so we want good salt, salt kills vines. <laughs> yeah, good salt yeah. exclusion. Yeah, um, and then there's, there's nematodes and phloxera, of course. Yeah, we don't have phloxera, yeah, but sure. you know, and nematodes, nematodes yeah. are yeah. life yeah. in So yeah, um, sure. You know, that, again, to get those good even blocks, you know, where they're all yeah. sprouting up and ripening at the same time. I think, yeah, yeah. So uh, look, it just makes sense. Yeah, some good salt. It's, a, it's uh, yeah, it's it's a great approach to have. Yeah. Um, Having said that, we have taken a lot of cuttings off our oldest block, which is yeah. Um, 74, I don't know exactly, um, yeah. uh, and just go on own roots with that. Yeah, <laughs> a lot yeah, of the places yeah. around the vineyard, so I yeah. think there's a bit of a... You kind of just have to, don't you? Yeah. You've got to give everything a while. Yeah. 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 The yeah. awesome thing is that you won't know the answer for another 50 years, <laughs> yeah, and then, exactly. even then something will happen and you'll change mind. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. that's, that's, right. that, that's great. Yeah, it's yeah. fantastic. Guys, um, thank you so much for coming <laughs> today. Thank you for sharing your time and your wines. They are beautiful wines, and uh, um, they continue to... Uh, build my confidence in what's happening around Australia and how energised Australia is to make wines that are just more delicious uh, from the Claren Vale, from Barossa, regions that, to be honest, I wouldn't have drunk a lot of wine from over the last, uh, you know, 20 years. And, and now I'm looking at them and thinking, hey, Spinifex, Head, um, now you guys, Bondar, um, awesome wines and, and lovely, lovely balance, lovely restraint, just... Ever so drinkable. Um, before we go, Bondar. What does, where, why, <laughs> Bondar? That's, that's my last It's name. supposed to be in yeah. Sydney or something. Oh, like no, 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 no. Bondar. just call it Bondar because that's yeah. what everybody thinks it is. That's my and then put a koala on the bottle. It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> actually a good story. My dad, he's an yeah. uh, like immigrant from World War II. Yeah. Um, Polish. He's, yeah. He's, uh, well, his dad fought in yeah, the Polish army, was taken prisoner. Yeah. He was born in Germany in a prison war camp, came to Australia. Yeah. He's, got got, he's got nothing to do with wine. He's got nothing to do with wine. My family doesn't, I'm, I'm the first. But his, yeah. his name, Bondo, actually, my name, actually means Cooper in Polish. So nice. uh, originally they were barrel yeah. makers. So yeah. Um, yeah, good one. But so how's your skills with the hammer and the uh, and, uh, I'm and, right and the hoop driver? I'm alright at fixing them, but yeah, yeah. Oh, that's about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Big chance. Yeah. Well, once again, um, the guys from Bondo, Selena, Andre. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was uh, sensational. Looking forward to trying more of your wine. Cheers. Thanks. All right.